So in this chapter, we have the opportunity to talk about mechanical advantage and uh, machines. That's not really much of a focus for uh, my course. I'll talk just a little bit here about uh, a machine, a, a nail puller. So we have a curl bar here. It has a, a pivot point down here. A short distance to the nail that we want to pull out of the uh, board a long distance to where the force is applied and what we can do is uh, set the torques equal so we have an applied force here a lever arm once we get the lever arm perpendicular to the direction of the force uh, we can calculate that torque we have a short lever arm here and we could calculate the size of the force that we can apply to the nail uh, just balancing torques would be uh, the illustration if you're carrying a wheelbarrow, pulling a wheelbarrow forward, you're going to apply an upward force. There's going to be downward force of the weight of, uh, of the wheelbarrow at, at the center of gravity of the object. Both of those will have lever arms. Then there's the force of the ground on the, uh, on the wheelbarrow. And in solving problems, you're free to pick the location of the axis of rotation. So for a wheelbarrow type problem we might choose to put the axis right here that's sort of a natural point. Uh, for shoveling dirt our handle uh, has uh, two hands uh, applying force to it and depending on the size of the load here um, we may choose this middle uh, hand position to be the axis of rotation and then we would calculate and balance the torques um, we also have to balance the forces in the vertical direction to have equilibrium. But uh, the torque is usually the key concept in setting up the torque equation properly. And that requires you to pick an axis and then be consistent as you uh, work the problem. Uh, cranks, uh, you know, we apply torque. But let's get to the human arm. So a natural place for the axis of rotation is at the elbow then we have a bicep muscle pulling up on the uh, uh, forearm there's a certain lever arm distance for that the forearm has a center of gravity and a weight mg would be a certain lever arm for that and then if we're holding a uh, uh, a thin physics book in the hand there'll be an mg there and also a lever arm and we would balance torques the force of the bicep muscle times its lever arm uh, that would be a counterclockwise torque and we might call that positive and then there would be a negative torque, a clockwise torque for the uh, center of gravity of the forearm and another negative torque for the book and we would, uh, you know, maybe the bicep muscle is the unknown uh, quantity unknown force but when the torque equation we'd be able to, to solve that um, a beam uh, just kind of illustrates the forearm uh, so that's actually where I'm going to stop in uh, in my coverage of the uh, rest here of uh, chapter 9 there's some other good topics that you certainly certainly are welcome to read over and ask questions about but just wanted to illustrate here a little bit of the uh, nature of the problems in this chapter the basic uh, situation is you need a very good drawing and you need to label the forces acting at the proper position. We will replace uh, extended objects like arms or ladders or beams with their weight acting at the center of gravity of the object. And if we have a uniform object that will be right in the middle of the object. So look for some other videos, uh, practice problems.